The Sequapemic, also known as the Swishwap people, are an indigenous group that reside in British Columbia, Canada. The traditional Sequapemic indigenous group was known as the people that lived where the rivers meet and where the mountains join. Their traditional language was a part of the Salish family and relied heavily on oral traditions to teach and guide their people. After contact with Europeans, they had picked up other languages as well, including French and English. Prior to the European contact, though, the Sequapemic people were classified as a hunter-gathering society that relied heavily on the land and nature for survival of their people. As stated by Furness, that the Sequapemic people pre-contact were semi-nomadic hunting, fishing, gathering people. This meaning they relied on wild animals like that of deer, rabbits, and elk, as well as relying on plant sources like berries, roots, for the source of nutrients, as well as for other purposes, including medicine and ceremonies. In terms of housing for the Sequapemic people, they relied on what was called pit houses and mat houses. Each was used depending on the season involved. This is explained by the source Chase Chamber, that the Sequapemic had designed warm, semi-underground pit houses for winter comfort and cool, more mobile summer residences made of reeds called mat houses. These houses held numerous families in one area for reasons of support, meaning support in hunting and gathering, the support in survival, and the strength in numbers philosophy. Trade was a common part of the pre-contact life of the Sequapemic people. Before contact, the Sequapemic people did not rely on physical value of money for their survival. They relied on trade amongst their members of, and other indigenous groups in the surrounding area. They would trade birds, sacred items, and items made by their people, including baskets, clothing, the and Sequapemic jewelry. life once there was contact with settlers. The first recorded contact between the settlers and Sequapemic people was in the year 1860. During the early years of the contact, the Europeans were at first focused on the learning of the ways of the people. Then this drastically changed to assimilation and destruction of culture and identity of the Sequapemic communities. During the early years of contact, the Europeans and Sequapemic would trade items from both cultures, including guns, ammunition, traps, pots, tobacco, cloths, and blankets. This was seen to the Sequapemic people as a gesture of peace and mutual agreement. Then after the contact with Europeans, the Sequapemic people faced destruction of their culture by outsiders in terms of disease, isolation, and loss of freedoms and rights. The first instances of colonization onto the Sequapemic people was in terms of the fur trade. The fur trade was a major player in the relationship between the Europeans and the Sequapemic people during the time of 1812 to the middle of the 19th century in British Columbia. The two major players in the British Columbian fur trade was the American Pacific Fur Company, which was established by American Dave Stewart, and the well-known Hudson Bay Company, which was established by Joseph Larquier of the French. The establishment of the three major trading posts in the Sequapemic territory led to the influx of the outsiders and settlers onto the Sequapemic land, and because of this, as stated by Willem Neck website, that the animal population started to decline and many of the Sequapemic people became dependent on the fur trade for survival. Periods of starvation also hit the Sequapemic people, and because of the fur trade, many Sequapemic people became involved in the business aspects, so they were able to provide and survive in the change within society. In contrast, some of the Sequapemic people were against involvement and enhancement of the fur trade on their territory, and as a result, as stated by the website Willem Neck, they took a direct approach. Regular attacking fur traders, their properties, and robbing Hudson Bay employees, including their own people if they were involved in the industry. Another incident that occurred during colonization of the Sequapemic people is the Caribou Gold Rush, which took place 1858 to 1864. This brought an increase in amounts of American, Asian, European, and British settlers and miners into the Sequapemic territory of British Columbia. As stated by Noel, the discovery of gold in 1857 on the Fraser River attracted over 30,000 white fortures seekers to the area. And because of this attraction, it affected the environment, the culture, and the way of life for Sequapemic people. In this case, land was taken away from them, their living arrangements were relocated, the land was polluted, and many Aboriginals were forced to become miners themselves. There were three major locations in the Caribou Gold Rush, as stated by Noel, Richfield, Camerontel, and Baxterville. And as a result to the Caribou Gold Rush, it allowed for the expansion of infrastructures, which include roads, bridges, and towns for settlers and for the pathway of mining sites. One of the major negative effects of the encounters between settlers and Sequapemic people is the event of smallpox. 
Death, sorrow, loss, and tragedy struck the Sequipemec people of British Columbia in the years of 1862 to 1864. This was the year of the smallpox epidemic that was brought to the Sequipemec people by European settlers that had to occupy their land and territories. And as a result of the lack of immunity to the virus, the Sequipemec people felt the destruction of vi the virus throughout their communities. The smallpox epidemic almost rose to the potential extinction of the Sequipemec people, as stated by the source Way. Before the smallpox epidemic of 1862, Way states there was 32 Sequipemec bands. Today, there are 17 remaining bands. More than 80% of the Sequipemec population fell to the deaths as a result of the virus. The spread of the virus was rapid because of the communal housing of Sequipemec people. Once the virus began to spread, there was almost no hope in controlling or preventing it from spreading to the whole community. Those targeted by the virus was the young and the old. As a result, the settlers began the course of action of isolation and expulsion of the Sequipemec people which more states as the process of forcing victims to move away from the healthy population without offering any help or aid. The Sequipemec people were taken from their homes by settlers, forced onto boats and other means of transportation, and sent away into isolated areas in British Columbia with no help, forcing them to face their fate, which was death. Another event of colonization between the Europeans and Sequipemec people is in the case of residential schools. Residential schools not only affected to the people in terms of physical cases of death, but also in terms of genocide of their culture, identity, and the tradition of their people. This can be seen in the years of 1893 to the year of 1977 and the running of residential schools by settlers, missionaries, and religious organizations. The school was located in the center of British Columbia in the town of Kamloops. The purpose of the school was to assimilate the future generations of the Sequipamic people, to remove them from their culture, to strip them of their identity and their individuality as people. The leaders of the residential schools had one goal in mind, and as referenced by the website Land of the Swashops, was to criticize, civilize, and Christianize Sequipemec people. Laws were also created by the government officials to justify the abuse actions of the residential school leaders. These abuses included physical, mental, vocal, and spiritual abuse to the children in hopes to take the savage out of the people. The effects of the residential schools on the indigenous groups are still being affected in the communities to this day. These can be seen in terms of the abuse that occurs from students to their families, the alcohol and drug abuse, and of course the loss of language and tradition of the Sequipamic people. Another drastic change to the traditional way of life of the Sequipamic people of British Columbia was in terms of the reserve system. The reserve system was put in place by settlers and the Canadian government to isolate the group from the rest of Western society and to take away their land. The traditional size of the land, as stated by Hansen, was an average of 20 acres granite per family. The first creators of the reserves of British Columbia was by Governor James Douglas and William Cox. The creation of the reserves and the laws that were placed on the people in terms of land rights were made purposely to strip their connection to their traditional ways of life and to the land. As stated by Way, the colonial government divided the Sequipamic people into 17 districts, each with land designated to each of them. The reserves in British Columbia started off relatively small to begin with, but continued to decrease in size with the pressure of laws and guidelines put in place by the government and settlers. As stated by Hansen, Reserves in British Columbia had barely been established before the government officials moved to reduce them in size. The reserves, even to this day, are seen as dismal living situations. There are numerous houses cramped into a small area that are designed to them. The house has little insulation or heat. Some still do not have proper electricity. The water is polluted and in most cases undrinkable. And the resources on the reserves, including education, healthcare, and police, do not meet typical good standards of Canadian life. Even through all the horrific events of colonization, the Sequipamic people are attempting, even to this day, to raise their voice in their own society and throughout Canada. This is seen in terms of the land rights of their culture, their identity, and their land. Some of the more recent, well-known examples of the Sequipamic people's present life include the Sunny Peaks protests of 2004, in Kalamps, British Columbia, which involved the Sequipamic People activist group. The protest was to bring voice to the Sequipamic people regarding their official land rights to traditional land and their place in society. The case represented the ongoing land and resource issues that occur in present day. 
As stated by Mercury, a camp was established called the Protection Center in the late August to oppose the continued development of Sunny Peaks on their traditional territory. Other land and resource protests have occurred in the recent years in hopes of bringing action and voice to the Sacropomic people. Also in the present years, numerous protection centers have been established for Sacropomic people in terms of their rights and issues as Indigenous people in British Columbia and throughout Canada. This includes the Soshop National Tribal Council, the Union of British Columbia Indian Chiefs, and other protection centers. As stated by Mercury, these protection centers were put in place to protect and exercise Sequapamic ties to their land rights throughout their territory. Another event thus marking the recent years of progress and enhancement in rights and tradition for the Sequapamic people is the establishment and creation of Sequapamic Ethnobotanical Gardens in 1999. The gardens was created by Mary Thomas, a Swakbampamic elder, who created the gardens as stated by Wonders for the purpose of promoting an understanding of Sequapamic language, culture, and the use of native plants. From the traditional ways of the people to the modern generations of Sequapamic to gain a connection to the past. The gardens is spread out throughout British Columbia province into five zones marking the different ecosystems that were a part of the traditional lifestyle of the Sequapamic people. The Sequapamic people continue to thrive in Western society, even through all the effects and actions of colonization forced upon them. And even though most of the people are becoming modernized with the change within their society, the people continue and will continue to take back their traditions, their ceremonies, their cultures, their voice, and their identity as Sequapamic indigenous people of British Columbia. And as the people move forward in their journey, the past and the people will never be forgotten.